So here are the uh, sequencing smart cells. I was so excited to get a tour of this lab at Children's Mercy, Kansas City. Not because of the way it looks, which for the most part is unremarkable, but because of the remarkable things happening here. The hospital tells us that what we're looking at is the most advanced genomic sequencing technology in a clinical setting anywhere in the world. But this is and one patient sample. So this is a whole family, and then this will go here. So four different samples. Four different samples. Okay. And typically when we sequence fam uh, patients, we actually sequence the parents as well because we can yeah. interpret the genome. Dr. Tommy Pastanen says this five-base hi-fi sequencing gives results in as little as two weeks instead of needing multiple genetic tests, which could take many months. And he says it's helping diagnose children with some of the most rare genetic diseases on Earth. Kids like Celia Steele. She's one of five kids, in, or not five kids, I'm sorry, five people in the whole world who have this um, diagnosis. When Celia was born, she appeared to be a happy, healthy baby. But as she approached her first birthday, it was clear she wasn't developing like her twin brother. He was crawling. She wasn't attempting to crawl. She would just lay there. He was pulling himself up to stand on furniture she was not even attempting to move towards furniture. Celia's mom says she developed involuntary movements and started having trouble breathing. Things got so bad that in 2018, they were life flighted to the hospital six times in five months. And after six years and multiple rounds of genetic testing with no luck, they finally got a diagnosis from Genomic Answers for Kids, the program at Children's Mercy. Her diagnosis is PDE2A, it's very rare, so they don't have like a, you know, a specific name for it. It's just the name of the gene. A diagnosis made possible by Dr. Pastanen and his team. It lets them see 10,000 or more pieces of DNA, which is 100 times more than was previously possible. It allows us to see some disease mutations that were impossible to see with other technologies, and we've been able to recover diagnosis for children where other sequencing technologies failed. This new technology can't yet offer these rare disease patients with a cure, but Dr. Pastanen says it's still worth diagnosing. And some people might say there's no cure mm -hmm. for that disease. What's the advantage of knowing about it? In about half of the cases, even if there's not a specific cure, it changes the management of the patient. And as Celia's mom explains, just knowing makes all the difference. It didn't change my feeling about having the diagnosis at all. To finally have an answer is just a blessing for us. Fascinating stuff. Dr. Natalie Azar joins me now. And doctor, how could treatments change and are there any implications for other diseases? Yeah, Gabe, that's what was so fascinating about this. The fact that knowing uh, that you have a disease for which there is no cure, but you're collaborating with people all across the globe to see whether or not an intervention could potentially help. And also management changes. For some kids, they could be at an increased risk for cancer, for example, and so they're going to be monitored differently. And there is hope potentially for other things like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's from this research game. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.